My move to the Tresser was obviously a progression. I did so more freely beforehand um, as a passerby or as a visitor. Uh, after my first loss, I knew I needed to shake things up and that resulted in me coming to the mecca of Canadian MMA, if you will. Uh, I kind of just came out to TriStar on uh, like just a limb, man, just kind of come to check it out. Um, I've always kind of like liked, you know, the philosophy of like Frost and obviously TriStar is a, a top gym. They've been around for a while. They've had a, a bunch of great fighters. I came over here to TriStar Gym. Uh, you got head coach Faraz Zahabi. Um, they have a lot of other coaches that come in, you know, from all around the world. It was just exactly what I expected. It was a ton of good guys in the room uh, every day, and everybody works real hard, but everybody was, you know, not a, a nut job. So I, after one training, I was sold. I came here, obviously I was excited, you know, I knew I was going to be training to, you know, a, a bunch of UFC lads, um, obviously same gym as George St. Pierre, Roy McDonald, um, you know, for us, I've been watching his videos, you know, since I was a kid as well, um, so it was, it was nothing of any excitement really. I slide my knee up and I start to drive my body weight, yeah, drive my body weight, and I give wrap it. A gift wrap is just a combination of Kimura and Sito. My whole career up until now has been all about encompassing the fighter's journey, being able to go to Thailand, Brazil, and everything in between. Uh, in many ways, TriStar encompasses that in one place. You have people from all over the world that come here to train. You've got a world-class facility with world-class trainers and fighters right there. You know, it's, yeah, it's, it's a sanctuary for fighters, 100%. The essence of the gym is the guys running it. It's really the, the trainers there. With the trainers, you get a good group of fighters, and then the more fighters you have, the more of a, you know, of a, of a, of a camp you have for everybody else. So, you know, when a TJ Dillashaw comes here and he's got great sparring, well, that's hard for him to find. It's hard for a guy at that caliber, you know, a former world champion, to go somewhere and get challenging sparring at his weight. Um, so I think it's, it's that snowball effect of good trainers leads to good fighters, good fighters leads to more good fighters. And then once you have, you know, 30, 40, 50 really good fighters, then anybody can come here and get great training and great sparring. So I use the bridge to put him down here. Three my leg before you touch the ground. So I, can, I can get a good position. Here. And remember when you do the elbow, you have to remember when you do the ankle leg, it's the elbow on the floor, not, not your shoulder. So when you do the ankle leg, the mood is really cool here. I feel like there's there's not like you know any any drama. Like everybody's just here to to train, get better. You're coming to work and to, to work hard, but you're also around a lot of your friends, and uh, it just makes it enjoyable. And, and when you can come in and and enjoy it and be in a good mood, it's just it makes it that much more enticing to want to be in the gym all the time. You know, we're in a sport where it's like it's a it's a fight game, but I feel like your training partners aren't just trying to like kill you. I feel like, you know, they're they're you know, trying to everybody's trying to get better and trying to help each other. Yeah, you feed off each other for sure. Momentum. It's a real thing. It, you can't touch it, you can't taste it, but you can kind of sense it. Well, you touch each other, right? Boom. Yes. Now get on top, Mike. Grab yeah. his foot, grab his foot. Yeah. Hug his foot. You know, how do you build a fighter? People always ask me that. And I think there's a lot of schools out there that have a cookie cutter program. You come in, we train you this one way. Here's our curriculum, this is what we do. Now, I have a very different philosophy. I have a completely different philosophy. And, uh, and if you train with me, you're going to have to tolerate some philosophy. Because I'm a philosophy major, and, and uh, I know some people don't like to think too deeply about things. But when you ask me a question, I'm going to give you an answer that reflects the question you asked me. You know? When you're, when you're a white belt and you come into TriStar, I train you like everybody else. You go through the cookie cutter program, you learn the basics, you know nothing, I teach you the basics. I teach you armbar triangle, I teach you double leg, I teach you how to jab, I teach you the basics. When you become a purple belt, or you've been here three years and five years and up, three to five years, between three and five years, once you're on the cusp of getting your purple belt or purple belt stripes, now I start to develop you uniquely. Because purple belt is the belt where you're advanced. When I give you a purple belt, you are no longer a beginner. White belt is beginner, blue belt is intermediate, you know, you're still on the beginner side, you don't have enough knowledge to know how you want to specialize. It's kind of like when you go to school, you know, you finish elementary school, you go to high school, in high school you start to get an idea of what you want to do. But we don't start you right away as an engineer when you're young. We say, no, look, learn a bit of everything, 
and then tomorrow we're going to specialize you in something because how could you know what you want to specialize if you have no idea about the landscape so that's the philosophy i like to i like to uh, approach training with cross ankle double underhook lift them on top once you lift them on top you close your triangle and you take them over it's not an easy move to learn once you learn it it's going to pay off if you have a guy on top of you who's trying to hold you down he will not be able to hold you down this is a, if you if you've been at this it's very hard for a guy to smash you. Very hard. Faraz is a very bright guy, and he's a very, um, he's an interesting character, because he's young, in, you know, chronologically he's young, younger than me, but he's, uh, he's exceptionally mature and exceptionally talented. I think one of the main things is he's constantly innovating. You know, I feel he's not gonna tell you to do something that he hasn't already studied and practiced and tried. He doesn't change the fighter. You bring your fight to the game while well, he just implements his stuff that can help you. He doesn't want to change you. He's going to help you with stuff that makes you a better fighter. He's thinking about new ways to do things. He's innovating. He's trying it first. If it works, he'll share some ideas with us. We'll put it into practice too. We'll all kind of collaborate and work out the kinks. If you stand next to me in a Muay Thai stance, I grab your legs easy. The clinch smothers our strikes, so we'd be clinching them. MMA. MMA, if you notice the Muay Thai distance and the MMA distance is different for sure. That's why we fight different. Because then people try to, do the, they try to go take the Muay Thai in the octagon, but the guy's too far away. Then they try to take the kickboxing in the Muay Thai ring, and then they realize they're too close, their strikes get smothered. Efficiency for me is huge. I mean, if you read the works of Kano, martial arts is about maximizing efficiency. If I can do this amount of work, with this amount of efficiency, this amount of energy, I'm superior to a man who could do this amount of work with this amount of, of energy. Muay Thai is very good inside, kickboxing, karate is very good outside. Very good. You gotta have both, you gotta have both. He's a genius in the mixed martial arts world, for sure. Uh, you know, he's awesome on the ground, knows his stand up, and can game plan fights, and also knows the strength and conditioning part and how to keep your body healthy as well. He's also very good at delegating. He's very good at, at organizing a situation, whether it's the gym or a training camp or the dorms. He's very good at kind of organizing a scenario, looking at the big picture and delegating how to get there. So he's, he's a very good general. He's a very good general to know who to pick for each, you know, each of the many things he has to accomplish. There's so much to manage. You gotta deal with media, you gotta deal with the fighter's needs, you gotta deal with the, the, the gym, you gotta deal with your family, you gotta deal with the, the fights that are booked. I get fights booked all the time. You have so many things to juggle, but at the end of the day, a human being could only do one thing at a time. So I always tell myself, I only have one thing to do at all times. You know, I realize that I have to manage all this. So what I do, I started reading a lot of books on managing it. And the truth of the matter is, you know, the best management advice I've ever gotten and all the books I've ever read was really that you can only ever do one thing at a time. So there's only ever one thing to do. Like right now, I only have this interview to do. I have nothing else to do. And after this interview is done, I will do something else. And I will do one thing at a time. And doing one thing at a time is the fastest way to get anything done. The one thing I think that makes TriStar stand out is the culture we have at TriStar. When you come in here, it doesn't matter who you are, it's about learning and sharing the knowledge. Everybody shares in the knowledge, everybody's equal, everybody's friendly, and we encourage people to be positive and have a good attitude. I think that culture is, is the most important thing because a lot of times I walk into gyms when I go to the US or travel, and I feel intimidated. And I'm a black belt, I walk in there and I feel these guys, they just wanna, they're scared that we're gonna tangle up and their face is on the line, their, their ego is on the line, and, and they wanna kill us, and I, I feel that, you know? and I find it uninviting. So I always go, when I train with somebody for the first time, I always make sure they have a very positive experience. When I have somebody come in here for the first time, I don't try to crush them. I don't, I roll with them, I share with them, I make a friend out of them. And then later we can have our battles when we have this relationship. And I, I always find that that's such a key thing, the relationship is so key. Because if we have a very good relationship and we spar really hard and we beat each other up, we're okay with it. If we don't know each other well and, and one of us dominates the other, we're not, our relationship is broken. We won't, that one person won't want to train with the other again. So I really believe in building a good atmosphere with a very good culture, with a very good attitude, very positive experience. And then the hard training, the great training is, is a byproduct again.